Hey YouTubers, it's Shane from HunterWrench.com. I wasn't planning on making this video, but uh, this is just such a great example like where you run into problems and why you should always recheck your work. We do a lot of carburetors here that we have to send back out. So if we weren't testing them, we'd really you know, get our customers in some trouble there uh, over something that isn't our, our fault, but as a technician, quote unquote, <laughs> you need to catch it, right? So what we have here is we have the, uh, the center fuel pipe is leaking. I got brand new OEM uh, Triumph parts here to replace and while we were at it we got a couple other uh, seals and stuff to throw in there and and make it all oem triumph so the the thing i was going to do with you is i'm going to show you where it was leaking uh you'll be able to see some before and afters of how these turned out but we're going to go ahead in this video and i'm going to split the rack with you in case you've never done this before you haven't seen the other videos in our playlist and especially for you triumph uh, fans out there. This was a, I believe it was a 2008 T100. I'll, I'll find out for sure and, and drop a link in here of what exactly this model was, but it's going to fit uh, numerous different models that Triumph made. But uh, I've already got the, the choke off, but I'm going to go in the deeper dive details of how you need to put this back together. There's some parts that could be easily lost and it's going to be good. It's going to be a good video. So if you want to stick around, this has caught your attention. Uh, smash that subscribe button and let's fix this. If you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, you're going to be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. This video includes timestamps, so check out the description below if you want to bounce ahead and just grab the info that you want. We've got new carb kits, new gaskets, new O-rings, you know, everything. We're, we're rocking and rolling and good to go, right? And the... Uh, so I, I bench test them and you see me in the videos where I test them with the bowls off and make sure they're good. So I did these individually, they were good. Now I'm assembling and I've learned over time that anytime you have these fuel joints where they have some type of, uh, you know, in, you know, I call it impregnated or whatnot, where it's a, a piece of plastic or rubber that's, in, you know, embossed somehow or whatnot to this aluminum tube that... I don't even flip them and put fuel in them and start to, to get that far with it. I'll go ahead and retest it this way. And so when I, when I test this one, I should be able to, with just the weight of the bowls upside down, you can usually get a couple PSI. I mean, sometimes, sometimes it won't even, it won't sit and hold all day, but let me, let me show you this here. Okay. You can see I'm just, I'm leaking straight down. And since I put new O-rings in here and that that I sized them because they aren't available from the manufacturer that I was like, ah, let's, let's just check my work. So I go to spray it and I'm really focused on, you know, checking on where those O-rings push into the body, right? Get yourself some good, just soapy water, right? Straight off the tire machine. Oh, and I already see it. I double checked. Good thing to always do too is take the tool off and hold it with your thumb and make sure that, that, uh, you can, uh, you know, get a good test out of that. But watch this. Let me get focused here. Oh yeah, you can actually see I'm getting big old bubbles out of there. Right. And when you really look into it, which I have, you can see it's actually coming right out of that joint. So I, I know I've done this over and over and over, but I haven't showed one where it failed. So I thought this would be a good uh, good time to make a quick little video. Always learn more when they break, right? So if, if you haven't seen it, get in our playlist, watch our videos. These Mighty Vacs that do pressure and vacuum, just a million different uses. And there is not a service manual in the world that shows or tells you to test this way. All the manuals tell you to put your new parts in, you know, and then do an overall check for leaks when you're done. But, you know, you can catch yourself and save yourself an insane amount of time by doing these bench tests, right? If you get to the point where you're all the way back on the vehicle, whatever you're working on, this one's pretty rad, but it's fuel injected. TW just did that one. You, uh, you're just going to save yourself an immense amount of time, you know, uh, figuring it out here. And I'll drop in a little uh, picture of how bad these carburetors were. And, you know, I, I, when I first tested them, it was leaking right away. And it with fuel in there, it just looks so textbook that it was coming out of the, the O-rings, which made sense to how bad the carbs were. But this is how you really know we're not going to need fuel leaks. We're going to do it right. 
All right, let's take a look at the, the tools you're going to need here. Um, because I've already had these apart, it's it's going to look like it comes apart crazy easy. But these uh, these big Phillips, they're a number three Phillips. Technically, they're a Japanese GIS uh, size number three Phillips. Uh, they're going to be really in there. So when you go to take those apart for the first time, you're going to use something like uh, an impact driver with a, a big real hammer. And what you want to be careful there, it's nice if you have a friend or you have somebody that can kind of support these. You do not want to sit and like put them like this uh, with the with the diaphragm caps on because if they're plastic, they're going to break. If they're metal, you could go ahead and dent them. You're going to be hitting those pretty hard. If you have access to like a type of clamping vise, you could go ahead and do something like that. All right, I'm just gonna show you real quick on this impact tool where it is clamped in a vise. And you can see I have clearance under here because I, I do not want to crush the carburetor or whatnot, okay? So these impact tools, you wanna make sure you got the right bit. This is a number three, it's a big one on here. And you'll see here where that clicks like that. So one way is removal. There's a on and an off. I'll go like this, an on and off. So you know, for a standard normal thread fastener where we do, we turn counterclockwise to remove it, okay? What I wanna do is I wanna take the bit and I wanna tap that bit down into the uh, into the fastener, okay? So I drive it down in there because this is gonna, it's gonna take when I hit with the hammer and the tool, it's literally gonna shock it and turn the fastener. So if this isn't fully seated, all it's gonna do is rip and damage the fastener. So I wanna make sure I'm good and fully seated. That gives me a little test too on my clamp to make sure I'm good. We don't wanna break a linkage or break something in the carburetor. And then I can go in here, put my impact on. And like I said, what I really wanna do, like get this whole, is this all in the video? Okay, I wanna take and take out any free play, any of that wiggle wiggle, get rid of it. I wanna load it in the direction that I actually wanna remove the fastener, okay? So since I am doing removal, I go here, take up all that free play and then just smack it. And now you can see it came out nice and easy, okay? For installation, okay, I just clicked my tool. Do you see how that clicks? For installation, you go ahead and kiss it, get the fastener kissed, and then same thing, give it a whack, and that's good. That's it. Um, with some soft jaws, I might be going over some stuff that's just way too basic, but if you know it, you know it, and if you don't, you don't. So, all right, let's get back to the tools uh, at hand here. Okay, so these, like I said, these are the ones that tend to be a bugger, and uh, you're going to need something uh, like this. I have a full video on how to use an impact driver. Um, I'll put a link below to that. Uh, let's see what else we got. So on this particular set of carburetor, there's a, a through shaft bolting up here. It happens to be on the Triumph, happens to be an eight millimeter. I'm gonna use a wrench on one side, socket on the other, have that waiting and ready to go. Um, our big problems, like I said, is the usually the joints in between the carburetors that are being fed there, they either have O-rings or, or uh, a leak, like I said, in that pipe itself. Since this one is rubber, is actually formed as part of this tube, as you can see from the replacement, uh, there's the only way to, to fix it is to get the whole assembly, which was actually really nice. That was quick and easy, one part number done. Okay, uh, the other thing to split this rack is you're going to have a choke assembly here where we're gonna be taking, you're gonna see this more when we go to uh, uh, assemble it, if you will. Let's hit the brakes real quick and, and keep in mind, I am gonna show you completely how to install this, but here's some really important call outs when you go to take this apart for the first time. Let's start at the top left and uh, top right corner. So there's the screw in uh, plastic washers. Now you're gonna see in the, in the video later on that I, I feel there was one missing but they are plastic and what they do is they act like a, a little guide and they take up a little clearance to not have a little slop. But when you take those off, watch this video, you're gonna see what's underneath there too. All right, we move to the middle of that rail and what you're gonna see is there's a little actual ball and spring. And this kind of holds some tension that when you uh, push the fuel enrichener or choke, if you will, in, it will hold it in place. And while it's out, it'll put a little stiction on there too. So. You don't want to lose that. It will fall out, spring out of there, and it's really easy to lose, especially as you start tipping things around. And then ultimately, when you go to pull this assembly apart too, you'll see by the yellow box on the bottom side, there's two really fine springs on there that help uh, 
hold this from rattling because it's a twin and it's going to vibrate. So that's what they do. They need to be there. They're important. Don't lose them. All right. One more note before you split the rack is that when, when we start to separate a multi-cylinder carb rack on the throttle valve itself, on the, the part of the throttle body that goes from the stationary carb to the adjustable ones for synchronization, you're gonna see we got another little spring in there. Let's look at these springs up close just so you don't have any problems. We'll start with uh, photo number one here on the left and you can see the spring is installed there. And what we have is that spring sits on, I'll call it a little nub, right? So if you look at the bottom of picture two, you're gonna see there where the, that spring uh, goes over that nub. So when you pull this out, you wanna pull it from the top side and pull it out so you don't violate or bend the spring real bad. And then there is an additional spring, like this one is, is just gonna go flying, but when you actually do separate it, since I have the photo here, there's a spring in number three. That one just kinda gets sandwiched in between those two halves and creates a little, like I said, just a little bit of tension on there to, to hold for the vibration. But when you, that one's hard to kind of pick out of there without damaging it. So I'm just really mindful that it's there in between any racks where I have two, uh, two carbs going together. So, all right, let's take a closer look at the carbs themselves. So what I like to do is get that spring out of there before I split the rack instead of it just going and flying across the, across the room. So you're gonna see me take uh, that spring out as well. And then on this particular one, on this Triumph, we had a, uh, a vacuum line that was attached here that has to be separated so we can separate it. And then another thing you'll notice here is that uh, when we separate the rack, this little spacer is gonna fall out and then we have an atmospheric vent tube that's gonna uh, come out as well. And that's what a couple of the seals that we're gonna put new since we're going back in there, we've got two of those. Um, these, these don't tend to be the big problem. The big problem is usually on the uh, fuel side of things. So if, if you're looking for a full video on how to do the slides and the jets and the floats and the, uh, the needle and seats and all that, I've got that already done. It's in our fuel systems playlist. I'll put a link below to that as well. And uh, let's go ahead and start to uh, look at some of the other tools before we split this. One thing I like to have handy on the on the table waiting is that I like these small hammers uh, to basically you know tap that shaft through. I, I don't want something massive to where if I slip, I'm going to break an ear off or I'm going to damage the carburetor that way. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, a couple little straight flat blade screwdrivers. Uh, they kind of make it helpful when we go to take out these springs to kind of get in here and basically just I'm going to pry this up and out of here. I'll put the camera up close on this when I when I go to uh, get it apart because what you can't see right now is that okay there's a little well actually I can show you there's a little nub right there that that spring sits on okay on the bottom side on the top it's flat it just rests against that but that little nubs on that side so if you noticed we probably couldn't notice because it's very, very hard to film, is I was prying it out this way, knowing it would stay seated on the bottom, and then I'd be able to get it out the top and then just get it out of my way. I wouldn't mess with the synchronizer. If you, if you really don't mess with those, they tend to be pretty close unless someone's really got in there and gotten kind of crazy. Okay, got that out of the way. You notice I like to put my parts in uh, containers as well, so they're they're not uh, gonna get mixed up on the bench. If I was doing this for the first time, what you'd see from other videos is I'd, I'd have two of these, one for one carburetor and one for like say for left and right in this case. If it's four cylinder, then I have four of them, one, two, three, four, so on and so on. Okay, what else do we wanna talk about here? I uh, just got an Allen wrench. So this got an aftermarket kit. He brought in a jet kit and an aftermarket screw kit where they're Allens instead of Phillips for these uh, uh, Keyens and uh, the needle nose pliers on here. Sometimes when you're going together with those springs, these could tend to be something you can grab on there and kind of work your work your way in as well. So that's why I have them on the bench ready to go. Just a couple tools that are going to make life a lot easier now than having to go look for them later. All right, another tool you're going to need that I already have out, but like I said, you'll see me fully assemble this. Is these uh thermal sensors, okay, sit like this. They block this plate 
and on the Triumph here, this happens to be a 10 millimeter. So we're going to need to take these off. Um, these can be in there. Uh, they're they're in there with some goop, so you could uh, use like a, a hand impact on reverse for that. That's something you could do. But we're going to need to get those out as well. All right, let's get this thing apart. All right, let's try this uh, overhead view shot here. Okay, it's another little spring that is, is hard to take out ahead of time. Let me show where that goes. Because it's down behind here in between, in between the two throttle shafts. And they're like that. It's a little bit larger too, so it's not as, as, as easy as something that's going to go flying down the bench. But be mindful of that. Okay, so just going to separate these two halves. I'm going to take and... Get one carburetor just out of the way for now. All right, on the top side here, this atmospheric vet pipe, you can see how it kind of angles this way. I'm putting it back that way because that's the way it came in. It's not the end of the world uh, if, if it needs to be flipped the other way, but you, sometimes you'll have carburetors where this middle T isn't right in the middle. So it may be closer this side or closer that side. So this is something that you normally want to be mindful of, say on other carburetors. Try it, make it really easy and put it right in the middle, so no big deal. So I'm just going to kind of... Uh, wiggle that out. Now this is coming out really easy because once again, I already had this apart. I already rebuilt it. Um, I've got grease on these seals and everything else. So it's just, it, it is what it is. That's why it's so easy. You may find it to be a little bit more of a struggle. I'm going to flip this over. I talked about that center pipe. You can see here how it's got a raised edge on one side and it's uh, concave on the other. So it fits right up on there. You, you, when I say you can't put it on wrong, people find ways. So I just want to make a point there. You can see where that sits up on that shoulder. Once again, nice job, Triumph. And then the other thing is on, if you think about this on the motorcycle, so this would be the airbox side. This would be the left carburetor as you're sitting on the motorcycle or the number one uh, cylinder in this case. So one and two. If uh, you notice this fuel line is on this side, okay? So this one, okay, let me kind of wiggle that out. It's got brand new O-rings in it, okay? This one would, by human error, you could put it in, quote unquote, the wrong way. So you wanna be mindful of this one. So I gotta go grab a couple new O-rings to uh, replace for the new fuel valve, and uh, we'll go ahead and get this together. So here's another little tip why you always want to remove fuel lines. You can see here there's a factory fuel filter. I'm going to call it hidden in that uh, bottom of that fuel valve. Just one last little bit to protect uh, your carburetor. Seems like a great idea, but if you're not pulling it apart or you don't know what's in there, you're going to be screwed. Let's head over to uh, the parts fish and see if we can actually find uh, this fuel filter. Uh, no luck in here, but ironically enough, uh, just kind of doing the old Google search, I found where they used a inline uh, filter for some of their older models. But problem is they don't show a picture, give any specs, but kept looking, kept digging. And funny enough, when you search for this, what you end up finding is this Kawasaki one. Well, these carburetors are Kians. Kawasaki uses a lot of Kians, and that looks pretty much exactly like what I have. Uh, I don't have uh, this in front of me to measure, try and come up with it. But I'm just not a big fan of these anyway, because you can't see them. I, I like more... Uh, traditional fuel filter if you will like an inline one uh my favorite let's see if i can i'll just do images my favorite fuel filter um i call it the 701c right here i love these 
These are just some of my favorite fuel filters because they're small, they fit really well. You can actually get these uh, with a 90 on there, but hey, whatever uh, whatever you wanna do there. I, I like OEM, but I, like I said, I just don't like that filter being hidden down in there. You forget about it, overlook it, it'd be easy enough. And also, as you're gonna see later in the video, I'm just not a huge fan of pulling on the fuel line, uh, taking this fuel line off you know, that T on there, that's really what ends up cracking these. So let's keep building these uh, carbs. And like I said, there's just a few more tips for you on this Triumph. All right, I got my new uh, fuel safe O-rings. And one thing I wanted to show you that, that I like to do is, you know, this is a manufactured edge, right? This is aluminum that's turned on a lathe. So you want to make sure and put some uh, put some grease around that so that when you put that o-ring on there you're basically just rolling it on there and not dragging across a sharp edge then what i want to do is kind of rotate that around make sure that i got a good feel all the way around that's not stuck or humped up or something and i don't want any dirt or anything to get underneath or in between that as well the other thing uh so let's grab a grab another one loop that up Feel on that edge. If you feel a sharp burr, I would remove it. Just hold that with my fingers and then just walk it, walk it over, okay? Simple, right? Okay. All right, then for reassembly, once again, you will have to go in here with like brushes and clean it all out, do do your due diligence on that and clean the carbon, getting it ready. So I've done all that. Uh, this should be easy for me. Once again, this was just a known leak. And then like I said, since I had this apart, <laughs> and now it's funny, since I've had this on the bench and talking and whatnot, I don't really remember which way this um, this was so I got to go look at my dang photos and try and see if I can remember let's see if I can remember from I think it was that way I had it like this and then I had it that direction I'm gonna go double check my photos another really good tip I can give you is take photos before you take it apart the only the only problem you have there is if you're doing a carburetor for someone else the last person could have put it together wrong so just keep that in mind as well. Okay, feeling good. I'm gonna go ahead and pop these off. I just kinda like check them. You know, they were so cheap to just buy new. <clears throat> I wouldn't say that that's as common uh, that people are replacing parts on the atmospheric vent side, but hey. Well, these new ones feel a lot more pliable. I'll tell you that right now, having it in my hand. So, yeah, they're significantly tighter. So, we like it. Okay, so what you want to do next. So, you got to remember that what we're dealing with is bringing these together, and we also have the spring we want to get in there, and this one we can get in there after the fact. Okay, so uh, let me go ahead and see if I can, as I'm working this together. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and before I just give it that final push. <clears throat> Oops, almost forgot, almost forgot a piece, almost forgot, almost forgot. Before I want to push that together too far, I'm going to get this. And then what I like to do is just put this through loose. Keep it from dropping down on us and then just keep working on getting this in when this is in and right with new o-rings and perfectly clean surfaces where most people fail is not getting the the bore clean and then there's a piece of junk on there and then as you rotate that around you're just breaking it free or whatnot this needs to be spotless clean can't stress that enough and then this uh there we're 
good there. I see we're nice and even. My spring didn't fall out. Life is good. I'm going to go ahead and get that little spring back in there. So hopefully what you could see is I kind of went in at an angle and then just basically rolled that in. Before I walk away or get too crazy, I want to make sure I'm sitting on that seat. Okay, and I can go ahead and give it a little test. Okay, and I can even, I will go ahead and press these and make sure it doesn't go flying out of there. Okay, so we're, we're all good there. Everything's good. And we are at that point to where we could start to reassemble this. Now, I don't, I don't ever see a torque spec or anything for these screws, but these are something where they're getting on there and you want to make sure they're on there good and they're not going to vibrate out. So I like to put just a real tiny little dab of uh, low strength, like medium, or it's not low, medium strength Loctite on here. That's the way I do it. You can do it how you want. It doesn't, uh, um, they, since they're on the bottom of the carburetor and especially like something that's a, a, a vehicle that vibrates a lot and rigid mounted motors and so on uh i get a little concerned about if they came loose they'd fall out fall on the ground you wouldn't even know so once again small little dab of medium loctite i say loctite and then i go grab permatex right <laughs> i must be feeling pretty confident that my leak is fixed too because if i would have done this last time i would have needed to pull these out like right away so that I wouldn't have to use the impact tool. And whenever you're tightening this stuff down, just get everything just kissed, okay? I'm not putting any torque on it at all. I want everything to basically walk itself in. And then once everything has hit a flat surface now I can go ahead and start to uh, crank on now this is not full tight I'm gonna come back and do these once I know that the carbs don't leak okay so I'm gonna hook it up to fuel now and we're gonna retest it and verify um, that it that it does not leak and then uh, you can bear with me you can stay in the video if you'd like and I'll go through and show you how to install uh, those two sensors and how to do the uh, choke assembly. All right, we, I'm not gonna go ahead and install the choke components or put the, the screws really tight. I haven't tightened this crossbar yet or anything. I just wanted the carbs assembled enough so I could test for uh, now physical leaks. So I'm gonna be checking around the bowl gaskets. I'm gonna be checking the crossover tube. I kind of set these uh, off-centered in the, in the vise here just so that you could see it better. Uh, it doesn't have to stick out like that. It's probably going to make a mess for me when I actually relieve the, uh, the drain screw right here, just so that I can make sure that there's no air trapped in my, my little setup here. So let's, let's go ahead now and we're going to test them for leaks and see if we are fixed. So go ahead and turn this on. We'll actually see the fuel flowing in for the first time. And then, like I said, I just want to go in here and I want to cause an intentional bowl leak to get any air trapped out of there. Got that one. Okay, just get that a little bit. Okay. So we know that we have fuel to the carburetors. And what we're doing now is trying to see if our leak is fixed. Yeah, it was just pouring out of there before you'll see in the original video what i'll do is i'll just let these sit for a bit i can walk away from it leave the fuel on it uh it's not like the weight of a full gas tank right like you, you really shouldn't be leaving fuel systems on when they're when they're a manual style fuel system so we don't have a vacuum operated this is manual right so uh when it works good on this that's a great indicator because the bike itself 
normally has, you know, requires vacuum for the fuel to flow, or it tells you shut it off when sitting. So like I said, this is a killer test to really see how good a job you did clean the seats and the integrity of everything. And let's, let's just say, because these are clean and, and done and, and I had full confidence that they were going to be good to go this time now that I don't have that little crack right there. But let's just say you don't know where the leak is coming from. If you haven't, you know, done so yet, you can actually see my video because I'm going to look all around the bowls as well. And then obviously I'm looking to see do I have any drips or do I have anything going on. But let's say you didn't know and it is leaking but you're not sure where. Your best friend is going to be one of two things. My favorite is uh, athlete's foot powder. And you want to get the stuff that dries white because then when fuel oil leaks uh, um, show themselves, it's really easy to see on white. But let's say you ain't got that. Good old baby powder. I could just take baby powder and just douse all around that. Uh, with it dry, I'd have to get the, the, the leaky fuel off, drain it, get everything dry with some brake cleaner, apply that baby powder or the athlete's foot powder. And then when I turn the fuel on, it's going to immediately show me where my leak is through the baby powder. I got full videos on that. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's super rad. Well, friends, we are looking really good here. But just to, just to be safe, I'm going to let this sit for a good 5-10 minutes here. And then I'm going to come back. Don't tune away yet because we're going to go ahead and finish installing all the choke components. And this one's a little different than the most uh, key and carburetors. So come on back. All right. No leaks. We're going to wrap this thing up. So one of the things I told you you could do with these style drivers, I have a place for a wrench as I want to get in here. Okay. Try and do this so you can see. And you can really get some extra... Get some extra torque on that. Okay. All right. Let's get some of this stuff out of the way that we don't need right now. want that to be able to spin free okay if it were rigid and bound there's probably a problem somewhere i got my springs everything's in place we're free we're good to go so next we're going to we're going to go ahead and put our, our little sensors in and be done with those so what I like to do on these, they had some type of paste. I'm going to just use just a, like a steam pipe fitting paste on here. Get some of that on there. And that is what... A hey, point I want to note here is that it's, it's obviously best to go to the service manual in case you're working on different brands and makes and models. But what these sensors really do is they're a, they're a, they call them a carb heater or whatnot. So it's going to electronically like heat that intake faster. So it what it did back before fuel injection is it made the carburetor manifold more quickly warm up to the the engine temperature, if you will. So this white sealant's on there, I have seen it listed as a Loctite product where it's it's literally uh, like an adhesive, if you were like a thread locker, but not something so permanent that it would affect uh, the brass to the uh, aluminum body and make it removable and so on. So check your manual. That's the best way to go and see if they call out a specific product. But I've had a lot of good luck over the years using uh, this myself, and that's my tip. All right, I'm going to check my uh, photos for some orientation of these uh the the blades where the electrical wire is going to go i'm just going to verify to make sure that there's not something like back in this corner i don't remember all right as you can see from our photo those were just in a forward position all right i told you a special treat for the the choke assembly 
their fuel enrichener. So the if you notice in here, we got three washers, two screws, two springs, uh, the ball bearing, and then there's one more little spring in here. Okay, so doesn't look like something's missing. When I took this apart, there are only three of these washers. But let's talk about what these little washers do so then we can uh, decide what to do here. So when you go to the Triumph parts fish, as well as a lot of Japanese motorcycles that use key and carburetors, they do not sell these washers. And I mean, it's something where you take it apart and it goes flying or you don't know what's there, you're gonna get it lost, it's gonna be a problem. But what this does, it's a little piece of nylon that allows this, you know, this uh, choke rod to slide back and forth. So it creates like a, a little guided area, if you will, so it's not metal to metal contact. So what you see here is we see we have a boss on the carburetor. So we have one that goes like that. And then if you, if you look hard enough, okay, and you measure like the whole distance of this, when this is installed, I'm gonna set it to the side here right now. When you have this on here, this is going to sit and flop all over the place if you don't have a washer on the top side. So what's my solution? I found these little uh, washer kits on, uh, uh, I can't remember if it was eBay or Amazon. I'll find the link. I'll put it below. But uh, man, I'll tell you what, whenever you need like just one of something like this, it's freaking fantastic. What you have to do though is I'm lucky in the case that I'm only missing one. So what I could do is I found one that's exactly the same ID and it's exactly the same uh, thickness. So what I could do is I could put it on this back side because there's nothing that's going to cause any problem. Okay, let me just set this in here quick. Um, I'll show you what's going on. I set this on here. Okay, there's there's no restriction. Okay, and when I crank this bolt down. It's not going to pinch it to where it's going to cause drag or it's going to cause any stiction. Okay, that's that's really important that if you put something too thick, uh, you'd actually create a problem. Okay, you create a sticky uh, fuel enrichment valve and that's not good. But the reason I can't put it on the top side is the, the OD is just a hair too big on this. I would either need to trim this. Um, if, if, I, if that's what I had to do, that's what I'd have to do. I'd have to trim it down but I could even cut like a, a square edge in this one because this slides underneath it, but I can't have it where it's putting any side load or pressure on this. This needs to work completely free and on its own, okay? So let's go ahead here and just start to assemble this. So the other thing, this, I'll tell you, this one's a, a little bit trickier. I told you we had those two springs, okay? You almost need 20 hands to be able to do this. So I'm gonna come through here, okay? And what I'm gonna do is get, get kind of close and get in place. When I said 20 hands, I wasn't, I wasn't joking. This is very hard to do alone, to be honest, because the spring can go flying, and we don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead here and grab onto the end of that. That one's on. Let's see if I just catch that outer edge. Come on. Got it. Okay. Okay. See how that takes up that free play that's in there? And what, what I want to do. Is it, I just wanted to test this right now before I put that other ball in spring. I've actually got something else I got to do here, but because I'm modifying it, I need to make sure I'm not going to be causing uh, any problems. So you're actually watching me actually work through a real problem. I didn't forget this other spring, but like I said, I got to make sure that this doesn't bind. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the stock ones back up here. 
and it should sit just a hair proud. See that? That's what we want. And let's see how this one goes. Because this is the one with the, the aftermarket washer. Okay. Tighten these down all the way and make sure. Look at that. No binding. Woohoo! eBay saved the day. Okay, super rad. Now that I know that, I'm going to assemble it 100% the right way. Man, I got lucky that that kit, that those plastic washers happened to be the same thickness. I think they were one millimeter is what they were. Um, this kit's super rad. And it was like 15 bucks or something, but... 1085 pieces. I also have it in black and then I bought it uh, a set in stainless steel washers too. Alright, we're down to some final parts here. We're going to install that uh, choke tensioner spring and that little uh, detent ball. So I'm just very, ever so slightly trying to pop it down into that hole. As you can see in the, in the photo for what it should look like assembled. And then get the little uh, the ball bearing on there. And then you really want to support the whole thing so nothing goes flying or whatnot as we install those last two top screws and then test our work. We'd love to know in the comments if anybody else has done a set of these carbs or you're doing yours right now. And I'd love to know if you only had three of those washers as well. I mean, this is one of those tough things when there's nothing in the manual and you're kind of using like reverse engineering versus... Uh, you know procedures given right so let's let's see so number one what we want is we want see how i have that wiggle wiggle and what i know by that wiggle wiggle is that i'm not clamping it okay i have the same thing here and then what we have now is because that that ball bearing set up there is that will hold that open okay and so on all right Let's take a look at this whole fuel enrichner choke assembly uh, fully assembled so you can really get up close. You can see there that detent snaps holds in place. You can see the springs are you know, holding the tension between the, the choke plungers themselves and the bracket. And then look at the washers. There's that aftermarket one. There's a stock one. And what we want to do is we want to grab that bracket, like I said, and look for that like wiggle wiggle on there, making sure that there's no binding whatsoever. And if it's even close, you got to think about things expand when they get hot, contract when they get cold. So we really, really want to check this. And the great thing is, is we have the, the left side there uh, to compare against a stock OEM one. All right, a couple last things that you want to do to set this up on the bench. I'm going to put this uh, vacuum line back on. Um, this one was like a perfect shape. That's a really cheap part to go ahead and... Uh, uh, replace if if in doubt at all so one of the very last things I do is set the idle adjustment screw and what it can do is uh, set that just a tad bit high I, I actually can show you right now how to about set it perfect but like I said a tad bit high so that you can lower it once the bike's fully warmed up so what you're going to see when you open the throttle valve is a series of holes in there, usually like four holes, sometimes three, four holes. And what I want to do is I want to set that throttle plate until just the second hole is barely showing. And I'm going to tell you what. I'm telling you, that is almost a dialed in uh, nice idle at fully warmed up all the time. If you're going to do anything, crank the idle up high so that the bike starts. And then once it gets fully warmed up, you can bring the idle back down. If you leave that too low, what happens is people are revving the crap out of the bike, run, 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 like that, you know, instead of just letting it like warm up or it's it's always going to die. So they're grabbing a handful of throttle. But like I said, just uh, just get that to where that hole is. That first hole is just like, you know, the first hole showing, you know, like I said, you could be a, even a little bit more proud and you will uh, find yourself in a nice starting point. All right, this is super rad. I got this uh, really cool magnifying glass for my, my iPhone here. And with an app, I can get in here and really zoom in and and uh, really inspect a part. So it's pretty wild to find the little crack here that I'm going to show you in this photo. But you just cannot see it with the naked eye. As a matter of fact, 
I originally looked at it through, you know, this uh, magnifying glass that I use for doing carbs and whatnot and electrical stuff, and I still couldn't see it. I had to zoom in. I think it was 200% zoomed in uh, to be able to see that. But the question becomes then, so what causes that, right? Some people say, well, it's just really old, okay? So this one is uh, a little bit stiffer, obviously, when you think about the, the years of it. It's an 08, so it's, it's old, right? But what really hurts these is when this is rigid in the carburetor and people really crank on that trying to get the fuel line off. Where's the, uh, I don't have the old fuel line handy, but when they go just cranking back and forth and back and forth trying to get that fuel line off, they put a lot of stress on that and that is what really um, speeds up that to breaking. So something to really think about, like when you're, when you're taking these off, you want to make sure that you're, you're pulling off this way. You're getting a pick like under that fuel line and, and, and basically breaking it free before you start putting like a lot of side load on there. Another thing that, uh, you'd have to modify it for a fuel line, but I've thought about doing this is taking something like these, where you could modify a set maybe and get in there. They're basically just to take lines off uh, nipples and whatnot. But I don't know, maybe there's a cool future video just waiting to be made to do uh, to do something like that. You ever seen one of these plier racks? Pretty cool. Um, yeah, so anyway, just want to give you that little point like, you know, that is something that adds this. I'm going to chuck this one up to be an old uh, as well, but hey, hey, my friends, I hope uh, you enjoyed this video. If you uh, if you haven't done so yet, make sure and smash that subscribe button, follow button, wherever you're watching this at, and then uh, it sure helps us out. And, uh, if you haven't done so too, uh, another great way to get all the videos and to be really connected with us uh, to get answers on like a lot of tech line stuff, you can join the community will be the best couple of bucks you spend in your life. Uh, there's a couple options there. Some do the $2, some do 5 some do 10 and then there's one-on-one -on -one for 50 Anyway, love it. Details below. There's links, all that good stuff. These things turned out pretty rad. I think our customer is going to be pretty happy bringing his uh, Triumph back to life. All right, next we could check the throttle position sensor against the specs in the manual. And uh, I'm going to go ahead as a bonus feature. For channel members, I'm going to show you how to do that. So if you're not a channel member, you better join now. Otherwise, I'll put a link in this video to that video on how to set the throttle position sensor. Thank you for all you members for joining. The rest of you, uh, still appreciate you coming by. If you found this video useful, drop a comment below, a like, share, all that good stuff. All right, my friends, as always, make it a great day and keep wrenching.